All right, I'm going to attempt a whirlwind tour of the Maker Mask expression. So on the first step, you heat seal all four sides to hold your materials together between two or three layers. Just quickly showing you what that looks like. Put it in, line it up, and away you go. So after you do that, you take out your pattern and you cut the window opening into the mask. To do that, I usually fold the material and the pattern in half to make that easier. Right after that, you take your window material and then I usually put in the four little teeth there to hold it in place and then heat seal along each of those edges. And the tricky thing there, you need to make sure to do it face down and if you're using a vacuum sealer like I am, you need to get the fold of the material right. So if you accidentally leave it like this, it'll seal the top, the bottom. So I make sure that I get it tucked in and then you make that seal. Once you're done, you pull it up and out and you trim any excess plastic along the edge at each step. So then you end up with your characteristic crisscross heat sealed window in place and now it's all down to the folds. Start off by folding the top three quarters of an inch down, usually hold that in place. This creates a channel for the nose bridge, the nose piece. So you just center that in the middle. If you're sewing, this is one of the two seams that you'll sew. If you're not, then you can put this into your guide, take out the paper clips and seal it down. The next step is to add a three quarter of an inch pleat on each side. And then I hold that in place with the clips just to get the angle set. Uh, if I'm sewing, I leave the clips in after I do that. If you are heat sealing, then you want to make sure that you get all of your pleats especially well sealed down. So I remove the clip, thread it in underneath my gauge, and then set that pleat in place using the heat seal, making sure I get all the way from the bottom to the top. And I do that on both sides. When you do that, you end up with the nicely sealed in uh, top pleat. Next step is to fold up the bottom three quarters of an inch. And just put a quick clip in there, flip the mask over, then fold it in half like so. And then I put in just a quick clip to hold the angle on each side. There we go. And then if I am heat sealing, I take that off. And then I want to make sure that that fold gets held in place really securely. So then I heat seal it in place there. And I do that on both sides as well. Once I've done that, you can, you can see the angle of the seal on both sides there. And I've created a pouch. Right. Now I put that bottom three quarters of an inch fold back in and then I just fold each of the two sides up at a 90 degree angle and tuck them underneath the trim. Sort of like you would uh, if you remember making, if you've made origami boats. It's very similar, if not the same. I clip that in place. Um, and that gives you the three-dimensional structure. If you are heat sealing your seams in place, then at this point, I gotta adjust my clip downwards a little bit. At this point, you can heat seal it in place across that top angle. I always do it both right side up and right side down. <laughs> Sorry, front side up and front side down to make sure that that is really secure. And I do that on both sides. All 
and of course I'm showing you the angles but um, it actually takes 15 seconds if you're going to do the seals in between. All right. Once you've done that, you'll end up with the seal right across the angles here. And then you can see I took a hole punch to just quickly uh, make an easy attachment. Uh, if you're looking for a more secure attachment, uh, loops tend to work better. So this is the basic uh, shape for the Maker Mask expression. You fold the nose out. Here's a flexible nose piece and uh, you are good to go. If you're sewing, instead of doing all those extra heat sealed steps to set the pleats, you just sew the single stitch line along the bottom.